Hey Siri, what's on the calendar for today? Here's your appointment. All day today, TEDx. Six o'clock in the morning. My alarm clock is ringing. I press. Snooze. Seven minutes later, I press. Snooze. Within the next 28 minutes, I do this again four times. At 6.35, finally I get up, tired, broken, exhausted. After a short cold shower and a long hot coffee, I leave the house and go to work. While my family, my wife and my one-year-old son still sleep peacefully. It's the year 2006. And that's exactly what I did five days a week. I had this kind of nine to five job, which was actually interesting in terms of content. And I was also allowed to manage budgets of millions, but somehow I didn't feel really happy. I was not fulfilled at all. And I was permanently under challenged. So when I visited a job coach, to speak about my demotivation and my tiredness, he was looking in my eyes and telling me, you're having a so-called bore out. Up to this time, I've never heard that such a thing even exists. The symptoms are very similar to those of a burnout. So besides my family, my wife, my, my son of one year old, and a cat at home, I had this bore out. So what do you do with a bore out? What would you do with a bore out? Well, it was time for a change, for another change in my life. It was time to disrupt myself again. And it was time to break new grounds. Only one year later, we emigrated to the Philippines to build up and manage a dive resort. Many people thought it's courageous, a big chance, giving up a proper decent job and quitting an apartment, letting go of everything. A dream of many people and also a dream of mine for so many years since I've been a diving instructor in Egypt a few years before. But as soon as we signed the contracts and we did our final decision, fears were raising, doubts were coming. And we were scared like hell. Do we stay healthy? Do our belongings get there safely? Do we fail financially? How is it over there? We were scared. But somehow, at some point, we did it anyway. We had to do it. It was a big chance. And it was a decision we made, a commitment. We just had to do it. Only three years later, we had a dream team together with 15 employees and business was running good. And the bore out had long been forgotten and we had an attractive purchase offer on the table. So it came that we sold the business and came back to Switzerland. What do you think needed more courage? To emigrate to the Philippines, to this resort, build up something new? or to come back after three successful years of hard work and passion. Why am I telling you this story? I'm here today to talk about courage, about change, about breaking new ground, about disrupting yourself. And I have a, th I have a few questions with, with me for you, just as a little warm up. Who would describe themselves as being more than averagely courageous? And who would like to have a little bit more courage, maybe in certain areas of life at times? And now I ask you to be really honest with yourself. Who likes it when others call them brave? <laughs> It wasn't me who came up with these three questions. These three questions were part of a broad-based representative study, Courage Study Switzerland. 
which was conducted by a Swiss market research institute on behalf of a major insurance company. And a few things that emerged from this study I found quite interesting. Three out of four Swiss would like to have a little bit more courage in certain areas of life. And just as many, three out of four Swiss like it when other calls them brave. So you're in the best of company. What is courage? We all need courage, and courage is good. Why? I'm firmly convinced that courage will be even more important in the future. Why? Because we're living in an age of permanent uncertainty. Everything is changing. Markets are changing, economy is changing, politics is changing, society is changing, working places are changing. The world seems to be spinning faster and faster and we're droning in information and options and also craving for more fulfillment, happiness and meaning in our lives. But what is courage? I got to the bottom of these questions and I'm still obsessed finding answers to it. Even as a child, I was absolutely inspired by, supposed, by the supposed bravery of people like Winnetou, Robinson Crusoe, uh, Robin Hood, and I still am. In conversations with um, some clients and with clients over the last few years, I was able to identify a pattern what courage is and how courage is composed. To develop courage, at the first point, four elements are needed. And I'm happy to share these four elements with you within the next 10 minutes. Are you ready? Yes. Cool. First of all, I would like to clear up with a big myth, namely that fear is the opposite of courage. That's the biggest misconception of all, I think. That's nonsense. Courage can only come from fear. If you do something without fear, you do not need courage. You just do it. I'll give you an example. Imagine the following situation. You go to work early in the morning and you leave your mobile phone at home. Does that take courage? Does that take guts? Now you're probably saying no. But in case you're suffering a so-called nomophobia, no mobile phone, there's such a thing, you can Google that then you need courage. And that's exactly what the Courage Study Switzerland shows. Fears are very, very individual and can be multi-layered. And so is courage. And fears are, we all know fears. I'm just, not just talking about treatable anxieties or therapeutic fears and phobias. I'm also talking about just bad feelings, uncertainty, insecurity, discomfort, unease not really feeling well or with a decision, whatever. Some people are talking about leaving the comfort zone. And we all know these kinds of feelings. But fear is good. If you jump out of a plane without a parachute, does it take courage? It just takes a lot of stupidity. So fear is good. It's just a matter how we handle it, how we cope with it. So it's a mindset also. But fear is not enough to develop courage, obviously. So why do we go into planes, even though we are afraid of flying? Why do we have presentations in front of more than three people, even though we have a stage fright? Why do we do often things that seem unpleasant to us? We would never ever do something unpleasant unless we have a why that's bigger than the fear. When I lost my father within five weeks, he was 57. Suddenly he had a severe, he had a severe headache and went to the doctor. Five weeks later, we went to the cemetery and buried him. Tumor. At that moment, I ask myself, do I really live the life I dreamed of when I was a child? At that moment, I realized 
that time probably is the most valuable resource we have here on our planet. So what do we do with our time? How do we use it? What's your why? What's your purpose? What's your reason to make a difference? Back to our formula. So we need a why that's bigger than the fear to develop courage. But that's not enough. There are two more ingredients. We need a clear decision for all those goals we want to achieve that are important to us personally. But at the same time, we also need a clear decision against all those goals we do not want to achieve. And sometimes there are decisions. They cannot be made reversed. You cannot get married and stay single at the same time. You cannot have kids and do not have kids at the same time. Half kids, it's not a thing. Sometimes you're confronted with decisions. They're groundbreaking. But as soon as we made a clear decision, it's not done yet. And that brings us to the fourth ingredient of courage. Most daring projects and adventures, the boldest vision, the boldest visions, they fail if we do not consider the fourth element of courage. We have to take action. It sounds very easy, but actually, Sometimes it's really hard to make that first step. What I've learned from diving, every single dive starts with that first step into the water. Take action. Time is not renewable. But how can we introduce these four elements of courage now in our daily lives? I'm absolutely convinced that courage is like a muscle we can train, we can enlarge, we can grow, we can stretch. It's not just a matter of leaving the comfort zone. It's about enlarging it, making dents in it. And I made it my personal passion and my personal mission to do things on a regular basis that I haven't done before yet. That could be very simple, bound things like jog jogging early in the morning, uh, learning how to stand on your head, making sushi, learn to dance, juggling, taking ass ice baths or making breath holes in the morning, whatever. At the first time, it always takes a little bit effort and courage to do it the first, second, third time. But little by little, you get used to it. The more often you do things, the easier it gets. The more often you learn new things, the easier it gets to learn new things. It's fantastic. My boldest vision was always to have my own dive resort. And at that time, I didn't have a clue where it could be and how it could happen. That I will make my dream come true at some point, somewhere on a Philippine island named Bohol, I didn't know at the time. I'm sure that everybody in here has some vision, some project, some dream, some business idea, whatever, that is just waiting to be realized and to be unearthed. But you have to have a clear why, make a decision, and take action, the first step. Everyone needs their own island. My island was called Bohol, it's located in the Philippines. What could your personal island be named? Dare to change. Thank you. <laughs>